Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Thanks so much for the support on the last ones. So today I have a different setup because we're going to be going through a new topic, which is housing. So today I want to go through all the logistics and specifics of housing, from deadlines to roommates to dining plans and everything like that. So I'm really excited about today's video. I really hope it helps you figure out housing as we're heading into the fall quarter of 2020. Um, please let me know in the comments if I miss anything or you want me to cover anything else. I'm more than happy to answer your questions, but without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, let's just head into the first part of our video. I'm just going to be going through the UCSD housing and you can model your own school's housing based off my tutorial and just figure it out that way. Um, but I'll just go through UCSD website specifically because I know more information about it. So. Looking into our page here, this is the general housing for undergraduate students um, page that they have. And I'm just going to start first with the college neighborhoods. If you didn't know, UCSD has something special. It's like a separate college system within the University of California, San Diego itself. It has now seven specific own colleges, which are on the screen right here for you. And when you're accepted to UC San Diego, you're accepted into one of those specific colleges. Every college has their own housing and dining and their own set of educational general requirements. That is the difference between every college, but in general, all seven of these colleges together make up the entire school of UCSD. The differences between the colleges can range in the way their housing is set up as well. And all of that can be found on the website here. And today I will just be going through one of the colleges uh, and that is Earl Warren College, which is clearly the superior college because that's the one I'm in. Um, but yeah, I just know the most information about it. I lived in Earl Warren College my last year of UC San Diego. So I definitely have a bit more of an insight and I can walk you through some of the details of what it's like. All right, so moving down on our page, uh, we can see that it has a little bit of information about every college neighborhood. So if we click on Warren College, it'll have a little bit of information for you about the neighborhood and the housing. There is something new for the fall 2020, and I'm guessing the entire next school year, um, they got rid of triples. So basically, the way that housing is set up at UCSD is you will have your own room of about two or three people, and then a few of those rooms get put in a suite style. Um, this will be how the residential halls are set up at UCSD. And here's an example of one at Earl Warren College. So this is the building setup or the floor layout, I guess, of the residential hall suite in Earl Warren. There are four singles. Um, they are joined with a bathroom and a common living area right here. And there are two now doubles, which used to be triple rooms and just a patio. The other option for living in UCSD in your first year is an apartment. So in this one, this previously was a double and a triple or two triples. Now that they have gotten rid of triples for the COVID accommodations, we now have two doubles in every apartment, which basically means there are two people living in each room and you're joined with a bathroom and a kitchen in an apartment style of living. So within Warren Housing and Residential Life, you also have a Canyon Vista restaurant, which is where you can have all your dining hall food. And then you will also have a coffee house and they serve a bunch of drinks, donuts, and bagels, stuff like that. There is also a aquatic center and a gymnasium pretty close by to Warren, which is a nice plus. And we have some basketball and sand volleyball courts nearby as well for your accommodation. I wanted to show you some pictures of what Warren residential life will kind of look like. So this is a view of the apartments, just some of the apartments in Earl Warren College. Um, as you can see, there are multiple floors here and um, you can see right over here, right there, that this would be just one of the apartment styles. So now there would be two triple rooms, the kitchen and the bathroom shared between everyone. Looking into another pic, this is a great aerial shot of Earl Warren College. It stretches all across here, and we have the canyon going around us, which is pretty cool. We get a really nice view. I'll insert the view from my room, which was awesome. So 
So here we go. Let me just kind of lay this out for you. In the top area that you see over here towards the right, this is all the apartments. So it's definitely multiple floors and the apartments of two doubles. Typically, some first years live here and most second years live here. By your third year, most people choose to live off campus. Moving over here, this is the Canyon Vista restaurant. This is our dining hall, which was newly renovated last year. It just opened up in our winter quarter. And unfortunately, we only got to enjoy it for a little bit of time, but I'm hoping when we come back, it's gonna be just as great. Then you have kind of a central grass field here with some sand volleyball courts, which you can't really see, but they're over here. And there's a few basketball courts kind of around the perimeter of Earl Warren College. Over here, we have two buildings, which are the graduate housing. So we do have undergraduates and graduates living here. Um, these are typically a little more off limits to undergraduates, as far as I know. Um, so you typically will not be living in these buildings. Moving into the last three large buildings you see over here, these are the buildings for the residential halls, which is the suites that we looked at with six rooms, four singles and two doubles. Uh, these are right here, and you will have a few suites on every floor and um, a common area shared between those suites as well. Here's an up-close picture of one of the halls. This is actually Bates Hall. This is one of the graduate halls, but it's a really nice picture for you to look at. As you can see, there are some patios for people to go out and enjoy the weather. There's a little peek at the sand volleyball courts, which are pretty fun and typically taken when the weather is nice. And yeah. As you can see, a beautiful day in San Diego was pictured here. All right, so the next thing I want to move on to is the important deadlines for housing that you want to think about. So this is going to be our tab over here. And let's just look at this. These times um, that we're facing in COVID definitely changed our schedule a little bit. Uh, for us continuing students, I know that it's still a little bit undecided about how the contract will look and how housing will look throughout the year as people are deciding their options for the year. However, I know that for the incoming freshmen, there were some deadlines set up. So I know that in late June, it looks like June 26th, the incoming students at UCSD received their housing contracts. Basically, this enlists all of the things you will agree to within your housing contract and the fact that you agree to live there for the entire year unless you choose to cancel your contract. Um, you will also complete a down payment, looks like it's $450, before July 6th this year. This basically guarantees that you're going to be living on campus and you will pay your full fee when the later date comes. These are the first steps to apply for housing. You always need a housing contract at the beginning of the year, and I'm sure this is very similar for most schools, and the down payment just secures your spot in the housing on campus. As you can see, there's not too many next steps listed on the website for now, so I want to give you a preview of what you can expect. The next step will be once you pay for your contract, if you choose to accept it, um, a little bit later you will receive an email having you select your room. At this time, you will select what type of room you would prefer. You will put your preferences for an apartment or a residential hall, and also whether you want a single or a double room. Previously, this was a single or a triple room, as I have mentioned before. When you select what kind of room you want, you will select who you want to live with. You have a few options. You can select someone to live with if you already know who your roommates you want to be, or you can choose to have random roommates. Both options are completely valid, and I think you should evaluate both options before you actually choose how you're going to be living on campus. The very last step of your housing process will be to pay the entire rate, which should come after you select your roommates. And this rate actually depends on both the type of room that you choose and are ultimately given, and also the dining plan that you select. And that is something I'm going to head into next. Just before I start, however, I want to note something special that UCSD has been offering for Quite a few years. This is something called the living and learning communities. I am not as well educated on these, but I do know that they are a great resource for if you have a certain community that you would like to join. Here you can read about some of the different ones that UCSD offers and you can apply to live in these communities. You will basically have to submit an application 
outlining why you want to live in this community, what it would mean to you, why it would make your housing process much better of an experience at UCSD. And then they will evaluate your application and let you know whether you are selected to live in one of these communities. Otherwise, you will be placed in regular housing as I showed before. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the rates and how that factors in with the dining plan. So this page right here that we're looking at shows you the rates for the 2020-2021 year. As you can see, you choose either a residence hall room or an apartment room, and that's going to be either a double or a single. Uh, in the Eleanor Roosevelt College only, there are mini doubles, but that is something that you can look into more if you are in that college specifically. Otherwise, it's just a double or a single room. Between the dining plans, there are two options. You either have the 3570 plan, which includes $3,570 dining dollars and $50 in Triton cash. Here's the difference between these. This is pretty key. The dining dollars are only spent at the dining halls. These are the main meals you'll have, and there's a dining hall in every single college. That is where you will spend those. The Triton cash is basically just like cash you would have in your wallet. You can spend these at the bookstore, you can spend them at any market, and you can, basically, you can actually spend them in a lot of businesses off campus as well. This is kind of just like some cash, and the best thing that you can do with your Triton cash is use it for your laundry. The second plan is the 5355 plan, 5355 dining dollars, and $100 in Triton cash, which is a significantly larger amount. Here are the totals that your housing and dining will come out to if you choose one or the other. Um, if you are living on campus at UCSD, you must choose a dining plan. This is not an option. It comes with your housing, so think about which one you want. Personally, my recommendation is get the lower plan. You can always add more money onto your account, and most people end up not spending it. However, if you are, let's say, an athlete or you know that you will be having primarily all of your meals on campus and you won't be spending any money on other meals, whether that is going out with your friends for food or ordering in like pizza or something, um, you can choose the larger plan. But from personal experience, I think the lower plan will do just fine. One more thing that's worthwhile mentioning about housing at UCSD is that housekeeping services come in and help us out every day. I know in the residential halls it was every day, um, and I'm pretty sure in the apartments it's the same thing, and they will pretty much clean all the common areas. They do not have permission to go into your room, however, so that is your responsibility. The last thing I want to say about housing at UCSD is you can always check for your updates in the housing portal. That is where all the information will come through. So once you click on here, you will be able to log in with your single sign-on, and this is how you get into all the information and look at your updates. I would also highly recommend going into what's called the Triton link. This is where all of your basic information is from billing to classes, grades, academic history, and most importantly, contact information. Make sure you update your contact information to be your UCSD email or maybe your personal email if you check that more. And make sure it's up to date so that you're always receiving the latest notifications and you're never missing a deadline. All right, guys, that's it for me with today's video. I really hope this helped you. Let me know if you have any other questions about housing and college and particularly UCSD students. Um, I really hope this video helps you figure out kind of the complicated stuff and all the specifics with housing and college. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video. And as always, drop a like, drop a subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I post next. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.